Hi, I'm Satsar Adias in the mathematics department at Clarkson University. My advisors are Professor Marco Budisic, Professor Brian Hellenbrook, and Professor Pat Pepani. We appreciate the support from the Ken Solonsky Ignite Fellowship at Clarkson. Today, I am going to talk about predicting the onset of shock induced buffeting using dynamic mode decomposition. Let me explain what is transonic buffeting of an airfoil. First, what is angle of attack? If we see first picture, it is the angle formed by chord of the airfoil and the direction of the relative weight. In video, you can see the simulation for the airfoil at angle 5.00. Yellow area of the video we call a supersonic bubble and end of the blue area near the yellow area we call separation point. When we increase the airfoil angle after threshold angle this supersonic bubble and separation point are collide and separate. When it is collide lift of the airfoil is lost. When it is separate Lift of the airfoil is regain. So lift, lost, and regain. This will be happening continuously. Then airfoil is experiencing vibration after certain angle. There is an angle of attack before buffeting and during the buffeting. See right hand top corner picture. In the low angle of attack, I mean before buffeting, solution going to the steady flow, steady flow to the from initial state. In the high angle of attack, I mean during the buffeting, solution going to the limit cycle from the initial state. Furthermore, this project we use 11 angles. If you see the table, you can see angle 1.00 to angle 2.50 shows no oscillation. Relatively, if you see the lift coefficient graph, you can see blue line shows angle 2.50. With the time, it will increase and go to the steady flow. You can clearly see no oscillation. But angle 3.00 to angle 6.00 shows oscillation and it's going to the limit cycle is during the buffeting angles. If you see the green green line, you can see it's increase and it's going to the limit cycle with the oscillation. Angle 6.50 and angle 7.0, limit cycle again break down. Flow becomes stable again. Talking about numerical simulation. To generate this time accurate simulation, we use Navistock unstructured 2D code it developed by Dr. Dimitri at University of Voimi. This code solved the Reynolds average Navistock equation using multigrid solution scheme with metric dissipation and also it used spalart almas turbulence model with compressibility correction. In lower part you can see code parameters. To do this analysis we use dynamic mode decomposition, DMD. DMD is the numerical approximation for the coupon operator for the finite time window. What is coupon operator? The coupon operator is an infinite dimensional linear operator that capture everything about nonlinear system. Apply DMD to the do input data V, numerically decompose the simulation data into the summation of the multiplication of three terms. If you see the first equation, you can observe it. Left hand side of the equation, you can see VTX, that's a spatial temporal snapshot matrix. If you see the right hand side, you can see three main terms. First one, VK shows spatial profile. Second one, e to the power omega t shows time evaluation of the spatial profile. Third one, PK shows the magnitude of the mode or relative contribution of the mode. 
Here we sorted mode using mean L2 norm. We can calculate mean L2 norm using B tilde equation. Next, the mode magnitude is growing if the eigenvalue is positive, and the mode is decaying if the eigenvalue is negative. And we can calculate true hole number using imaginary part of the eigenvalue. We call it the ST. And next, let's let's discuss simple example. If you see the first video, it shows the data set. Other two videos shows first dominant mode. The dominant mode shows special behavior of this flow. I mean first video. Furthermore, the mode isolated the area of the flow that oscillate at buffeting frequency, and we see that the region where the shock and separation point travel are highlighted. That's the important thing in here. This project we develop DMD analysis with sliding time window. First, why we are talking about this? I mean, time sliding time window. Important thing is adding too much data into a single DMD analysis does not precede the stable output of modes. If you read page Kressel paper, I cited below the right hand, right hand side, uh, the slide, you can understand it. So shrinking the window stabilizer, the output, by placing the window in different stages of the trajectory result in observing either repelling or attracting part, and therefore DMD analysis will have different results. For example, if you see the top left corner picture, gray color line, it represents a trajectory. It moves from an unstable equilibrium to the stable limit cycle. If you get a DMD data window from red line, I mean departure from the equilibrium gives a real part of the DMD eigenvalues are positive. If you get a data window from the purple line, I mean transition part, gives a di give the disorder disorganized DMD eigenvalue spectrum. You can't say anything. If you get the DMD window from blue line, I mean approach to the limit cycle part, give real part of use real part of the eigen, DMD eigenvalues approximately equal to zero. But time window should not be too small because here we need to capture the time, time period of the system. Another point is time window should not be too long because it will pass the transition point. If it is past the transition point, it will give a disordered spectrum. Next step. So we, we know what's happening here now. For the next step, we need to visualize this. If we want to initialize this, we proceed right hand side slide uh, part. See this right hand side of the slide. You can see a data set for angle 5.0. It has 100 time steps. We can make a different time window like in this image, such that t time window equals one, time window equals two, time window equals three, you can see in the, in the first image. So on. If take first time window, it will start from t equals zero and it should not be too big or too small. This example, we took it as 27. It enough to capture our time period, our time period. Next, we apply DMD for this window and generate the eigenvalues for this window. Next, see the right next next see the right hand side bottom picture. You can see two subgraphs. We put the real part of the eigenvalue in the first column of the right hand side graph and the imaginary part of the eigenvalue we put into the first column of the left hand side graph. We can proceed these for each sliding time window so we can we can get this eigenvalue spectrum. In this spectrum, 
color of the intensity shows the mean L2 norm. That means we want to visualize dominant modes in here. In the previous slide, we talked about how to create the spectrum for single trajectory using a sliding time window. But we don't have one trajectory. We have many trajectories with different angles. We have 11 angles for in this project. So we need to develop the spectrum for many angles. So we can track how the window moves and how to go ang between angles. For example, we in here we choose two angles, angle 3.00 and angle 3.25. You can see uh, about two lift coefficient graph. See the bottom picture of two picture with two subplots. Using sliding time window, we can fill the first slot of the first subplot with through hole numbers and first slot of the second sub, sub subplot with real part of the eigenvalues for angle 3.00. Similarly, we can fill second slot for angle 3.25. Furthermore, we can proceed this for all 11 angles and we can make a single plot. See, next slide, you can see it. This is the most interesting part of the research. This plot shows all 11 angles using sliding time window. Red dot shows the stable eigenvalue, blue dot shows the unstable eigenvalues, and intensity of the color indicate the magnitude of the mean L2 norm. Each angle has 73 time windows and each time window has 27 eigenvalues. If you see if, if you see this graph, you can see horizontal stripe. We call it the buffeting frequency band. If you observe inside of the buffeting frequency band, buffeting appear when the when, when the angle equal to 3.00 and it continue all the way through the angle 6.00 and after that it it again disappear that band furthermore we have dominant mode that access correct frequency window and that goes from being decaying to being growing so in angle 3.00 you can see onset of buffeting Next slide, we need to more focus on buffeting frequency band. Let me explain the dominant mode of the spatial profile in the sliding time window 73 of angle 3.00 and all the subsequences angle as well. Next slide. Let's try to understand what happened to this spatial profile of this point in each angle. If you see first picture of spatial profile, transition happening from this sharp thing. That, po that point shows collisions of supersonic bubble and separation point. If you increase the angle, you can see this sharp thing, I mean active area getting wider, wider, and wider. But if you see the uh, line angle, bit, angle between 3.0 and 6.00, we can say nothing changed frequency much. That active area becoming wider, wide, and wider means that the shock, I mean end of the super bubble, is traveling more and more across the wing as the angle is increased. The active area, active zone is becoming wide. That's the mean. This is consistent with the Hofbification mechanism. In here you can see appear more harmonic harmonic modes. So we plan to analyze these harmonic modes 
we got the angle 4.00 and we made the special profile of it. If we analyze this harmonic mode, we can see additional structures of the interacting between shock and the separation point. If you see this image, you can see there's one sharp thing, sharp thing two sharp thing, and more and more. We can see more features. Let me explain disappearance of the buffeting mode. We can see buffeting start from angle 3.00 and that frequency line go until 6.00. After angle 6.00, we can see buffeting is disappear. That line is, line, line is broken. And you can observe after angle 6.00 mode starting to decay again with wake showing more structured if you see picture of angle 6.5 you can see more structured and also we can see in the angle 7.00 it's create the additional limit cycle you can see in if you see this picture you can see two lines appear one is red other ones is blue That means indicating a secondary bifurcation. Interesting result. So this is the conclusion. If we do DMT analysis without sliding time window, we can see it produce inconsistent spectra. If we use sliding window method, we can capture persistent spectral characters. And we can identify persistent of buffeting mode from decaying to growing mode. Our sliding window method generate the spectrum and it consistent with the Hoff bifurcation mechanism for a transition to buffeting. Using this persistence of model provide we can do early detections of bifurcation. So these are the my references. And thank you very much. If you have any question, you can ask from me.